Well, the NFL free agency is here, and Brett Veach was silent to a point. He signed Chris Jones. That was the big deal, so I'm not going to be too mad at him. Obviously, the wide receiver is still an issue, but that can be handled in the draft. We appreciate you joining us here on the Chiefs Report by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Jay Sanders, and although the first day has come and, well, effectively gone, I mean, I doubt we'll see any more deals, at least for the Chiefs, over the next couple of hours, but if we do, we'll have them right here. Um... He was silent, and I'm not going to say that I was surprised by this. I'm not going to say that this was not expected. But you have to understand, the Chiefs re-signed Chris Jones, and that was the move they needed to make. That was it. Past that, I don't really care. I mean, you got what you got. Uh, you're going to get a receiver at pick 32. Trade luxurious need, that's what we're going to talk about in a couple different facets. Plus, they did sign five players uh, to uh, some specific contracts that we'll talk about later on in this show. So... I'll kind of talk about that, but I do want to say that you should follow me on Twitter because when the Chiefs make a move, if the Chiefs make a move, whatever happens, guess what? I got you covered. So the first 10 people that follow me back on X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it, I'm going to follow you right back. And I'm telling you, you should follow me because I've got a lot of stuff going on right there at Jace Andrews underscore. The reason you should follow me, well, guess what? I'm tweeting out breaking news all the time. Just like last night when we officially got the announcement of Chris Jones' contract and it's a nice contract. He will have a salary cap hit this year of just $7.35 million. Obviously, that number will go up to $32 million and then $40 million and then back to thirty. million. But still, the fact that Brett Veach did this, it makes me believe he's saying three Peter bust. He's saying, you know what? Our window is here. Our window can still be here. And then after that, we can figure it out otherwise. Let's go win three. And then we can figure out the money after that, which I kind of appreciate. And I'm not going to sit here and say the Chiefs are going to be bad in two years. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that he wants to make sure he puts this team in its best position to win for next year. I like the concept, and I like the way that he's thinking. Now, let's talk money because obviously that still is a concern. Now, their current cap space is negative around $5.3 million. Now, the Chiefs will still need to be under that amount by Wednesday of this week. But there's multiple things they could do. They could restructure the contracts of Patrick Mahomes and Jawan Jennings. If you restructure just one of those, you're probably in there. Or just simply trade away Snead. I don't know that that's the easier option than that. I think Snead has really shown himself as a top-tier quarterback in the National Football League. And on top of which, there's like a bunch of teams that are interested in him. So negative 5.3 million, which is not that bad considering you have Chris Jones for the next five years. You have Patrick Mahomes under contract for those next five years. Uh, obviously, Travis Kelsey, not there just yet, but we don't know what his plan is with his career. Funny thing, though, we got a report that said the Chiefs wanted to trade Snead before today. They wanted to have him trade it out before today. And I am uh, curious to see what happens in the next 24 to 48 hours because Obviously, with Wednesday's deadline, I feel like we're going to see something crash, something break, something's going to go wrong. I don't know what it's going to be if the Chiefs can't trade Steed or if they're going to have to restructure Mahomes and Juwan's contract a little bit sooner than they'd like. Either way, they got to get something done. Now, there are seven teams interested in Juwan Taylor, and a lot of these guys made moves today. You talk about the Minnesota Vikings. They missed out on their quarterback, Kirk Cousins. He goes to Atlanta, but they sign a couple of pretty key defensive players. The Indianapolis Colts. They get Pittman on the extension. They get back uh, Grover Stewart. He comes back. Tennessee Titans. They get Tony Pollard. The Patriots bring Antonio Gibson. The Lions trading away Brian Burns. Atlanta Falcons. Guess what? They got Kirk Cousins. The Jacksonville Jaguars. We saw them get Gabe Davis. There's a couple of teams here that have already made moves. And are they going to try and make more to trade for Legereus Sneed? Now, obviously, Sneed is going to cost something, though. Well, what will he cost? It's either a first rounder or a second rounder because, well, we have a report. We'll read it to you in a second that the Chiefs are expecting at least a second rounder. So I want to know what you think here. What is he worth? If he's a second rounder to you, type two. If he's a first rounder to you, then type one. What is Sneed's value? Is he worth a second round draft pick in a trade or a first round draft pick? One for first, two for second. All right, here's the report at The Athletic. We talked about it yesterday, but I want to rehash this because – it's important the Chiefs enter advanced trade to discussions for Steed, which by this point they have. They would seek at least a second-round pick. Since Tuesday, obviously, six teams have shown interest. That has now grown to seven. And obviously, we look at this and think, okay, at least a second-round pick. Well, that's exactly why Steed is not an Indianapolis Colt right now. There were reports that the Colts were ready to put an offer on the table. Problem was that offer did not include a second-round pick. It was a third-round pick. And with that, 
I think he's worth a second rounder. I think he is. I think it's right now, you're talking about one of the best cornerbacks in the National Football League, potentially the best cornerback in the National Football League. And the problem is for teams trading, though, he's worth a second round pick, and you're going to have to sign him to a contract of around $20 million. I mean, that's just the, the face value of this all. You have to understand that you're trading for Snead, but you're also trading for his contract and to pay him right after that. So I don't know what's going to happen. I have to assume over the next 48 hours or so, we'll have to figure some things out. And I think Snead could be the one that figures it all out because if you trade him away and you don't get anybody back, you just get picks, your cap space is automatically solved. You restructure Mahomes and you restructure Jawan Taylor. You got more space to re-sign some potential candidates, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And we'll also go out and get Darnell Mooney, go get uh, Calvin Ridley, who's still available. So potential to still make some moves and maybe even in the trade realm. Which, Speaking of which, coming up, we're going to talk about a splash move that I could see Brett Veach making. And uh, the Chiefs, I think you're going to like this one. So make sure you stick around. I'll tell you that in just a moment. But before that, i got to tell you about one of our amazing sponsors here at Chat Sports, and that is Prize Picks. The number one daily fantasy sports app on all the land. And you can get a $100 deposit match by going to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and using code CLNS. Now, football season may be over, but guess what? The action on the diamond, well, it's heating up. MLB opening day is just a couple weeks away. They do have the South Korea series with the Padres and the Giants Literally on March 20th, we are less than nine days away now from that happening. And there's still the season-long totals up on the Prize Picks app. Tanya, go get it in right now and tell me. I like to think my MLB knowledge is pretty nice. That's what I would say is my most knowledgeable sport besides the NFL. Go with these picks. I got the more on Ronald Acuna Jr., 37.5 season-long home runs. Mookie Betts, he's no longer the top guy, and he's been hitting outstandingly in spring training. I'm going the more on 32.5 season-long home runs. And then KB, listen, I know he had a struggling year last year. He's playing in Coors Field, though. That ball travels. I'm going the more on his 19.5 season-long home runs. I think he'll hit probably 15 of those in Coors Field, so he just needs five outside of them. Again, you can get that $100 deposit match by going to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and using code CLNS. They also, on Prize Picks, offer some weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts. So Taco Tuesday, each Tuesday, they discount a select player projections of up to 25% to provide even more value. You best believe I'm going to be putting some of those in, especially when baseball season is heating up, and they got the pitch count, and they got the uh, different types of hits, and they're going to discount those. You best believe I'm going to take that. For the final time, go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for the first deposit match up to $100. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types where it makes prize picks the number one daily fantasy sports so, app. Shout out to prize picks. It's daily fantasy sports made easy. T. Higgins. You're a chief, my guy. Come on, this has got to work. We talked about signing him in free agency. Now it's time for Brett Beach to pull up his cojones and say, hey, if I get T. Higgins, this team is going to be a reputable team for the next three years, and it's not going to be close. Now, how do you do that? Well, that's where the problems come in. But we'll get to that in just a second. I first want to say this guy is an amazing player, even though his stats last year, not the best. But that's because he only played 12 games. He had a hamstring injury injury. But I point back to the Steelers game late in the season. No Jamar Chase. Jake Browning's his quarterback. And guess what? This guy takes a slant route 80 yards to the house. T. Higgins has a certified wide receiver one stamp in my book. But he's just never gotten that chance. Over the past four years, his stats are pretty dang nice. Back-to-back 1,000-yard years in 21-21 and 2022. Plus, his touchdown numbers are very, very solid all around the board. Now, here's the thing. What, it's gonna, what is it going to take? Well, Chiefs do have somebody they're trying to trade away. What if the Chiefs got T. Higgins, traded Legereus, a little franchise tag swap, and the Chiefs just give the Bengals their second-round draft pick, which is 64. It's basically a third-round draft pick. I like that. I mean, you think about that. You use pick 32 on Ennis Drake Straw Jr. There's your cornerback fit. You got a wide receiver proven for your draft pick at, at pick 64. I kind of like this move. Maybe you don't. Let me know in the comment section. Would you accept this trade? Type Y for yes. Type in for no. Curious to see what y'all think in this instance because, man, this is a nice one. This is a nice one. 
The Chiefs did make some signings, though, although they're not the signings you would expect. Now, um, these are guys that we've heard of. They were on the Chiefs squad this past year, and now they're just kind of re-upping their contract. This came from the Kansas City Chiefs themselves. They have placed exclusive rights tenders on guard Mike Lindo, linebacker Cole Christensen, linebacker Jack Cochran, defensive end Malik Herring, and quarterback Nazee Johnson, which Nazee Johnson, I still think he's got some prowess. Now, what does exclusive rights tenders mean, Jace? That's not chicken tenders, I'll tell you that. Here's what they said. Players becoming exclusive rights free agents by having an active roster contract expire before accruing three seasons of service time. Mark, that would see them qualify for restricted free agents. A team can retain their service by offering them a one-year minimum salary contract. If tendered a contract of offer, exclusive rights free agents may not negotiate with other teams. In short, they're going to be back with the, with, with the Chiefs in 2024. Because basically, here's their two options. Get paid the least amount of money, but be on a team that can win a Super Bowl. Not play football. I'm picking this one. I want a Super Bowl ring. So that's all I'm saying. They'll be back in 2024. Uh, no really worry there. I do have some free agency updates because although the Chiefs have not signed anybody, they've really not lost anybody either. The people that they had that were looking to be potential free agents, guess what? They didn't sign anywhere. So I want to go through my top five re-signed candidates real quick here to end off this show and tell you who I think the Chiefs should try and bring back. First one's McCall Hartman. This wide receiver room has been tough, and even if you draft wide receiver at pick 32 or you get T. Higgins, I still want some help, and McCall Hartman knows the offense, and he's had a very important role in this team in the past two years, even though he wasn't even on the team for the first six or seven weeks this year. Just re-sign him. You missed out on him last year, and then you had to trade for him. He'll take probably a, a less amount of money. Just, just let him come back. Mike Edwards, the safety. I think that given Geno Stone got just a $12 million contract for being the second rated guy in terms of interceptions, you can probably get Mike Edwards, Mike Edwards for pretty cheap. I'd like to see him back in Kansas City. Tershawn Morton, you know my stance. Defensive ends are a need for the Chiefs. I trust Felix and Uduke Uzoma. I don't want you to think that. I don't think that. But you need depth. And Charles Amenehu. We'll be back till around week six, uh, maybe even possibly longer than that. So getting Church on Morton, who played really well and is pretty good friends with Chris Jones, will, will help you out a lot. And then Jarek McKinnon and Clyde edwards Lair, the last two running backs. Got to sign one of them. I don't know who. If you sign both, cool. Uh, I, I gotta think you got to pick one of these guys. I'm saying McKinnon is my choice, but we'll have to wait and see. Austin Eckler's still on the board. Chiefs could potentially be getting him. I know that they were linked with that over a couple of different days. All right, I want you to get in the comment section. Who is your top re-signed Chiefs candidate in 2024? Is there a name that I missed? Is there one of those five guys that you think should be higher on the totem pole? You think McCall Harmon shouldn't be number one? You think you should have Jerk McKinnon? Well, here's your top. Get in the comment section and let me know. Name it. I'm reading all your comments. And, hey, we're popping off here. This is our third video of the day on the Chiefs. You think we're not putting effort in? You think we're not putting the content out? It'd be wrong. We really appreciate y'all watching. Hit that subscribe button, youtube.com slash Chiefs TV. Man, Chiefs Kingdom, Super Bowl champions don't need to do much during free agency. That's all I got to say. Chris Jones is back. We did what we needed to do. Peace out. We'll see you later.